Hey everybody, this is Pastor Ken and this is my wife Brenda. And we just want to welcome you to another segment of Quality Time with Ken and Brenda. It's always good to have you join us today and as we're going to pick up from our previous session as we talk about well, we were talking about the things that make you smile. We were doing that list. Mm -hmm. um, and I think especially during this time, mm -hmm. this is so important because there's so much going on right. where it'll keep us distracted from each other. Mm -hmm. Right. So this was a way of kind of pulling back, um, seeing what's important as far as relationship was concerned. Mm -hmm and focusing on the good mm -hmm. as opposed to, again, what's going on in the world. So we want to kind of just bring you back, if we could, um, to that time. Mm -hmm. okay. What about the time? <laughs> the t well, we talked about, we want to just bring you back to what we talked about last time. Yes. About the list that you were supposed to do to write down the things that made you smile and then to together talk about it. True. Sorry, guys, I forgot all about that part. <laughs> Threw me off of it. But we're not going to bleep this out. We're going to keep this in this segment mm -hmm. because let you know that we're real. Right. Um, everything in life is not edited, so we just need to just continue to move forward. But right. we do. We do want to encourage you about that list that we did share with you to write about um, the things that make your spouse smile, about mm -hmm. what, what, what you enjoy. Um, we we often do that, and we said this in a previous segment, that we often do that list with new couples that we counsel about uh, make a list of what makes you, what upsets you or what concerns you, what you mm -hmm. don't like, mm -hmm. and the other list is about what you do like. And we want to focus on those things and celebrate those things that you do like about your spouse or that you love about or that you care about. And we want to just highlight those items. And we pray that you actually did those things as we join you again in this, another se this other segment of Quality Time with Ken and Brenda. Amen. Amen. And one of the things we wanted to do today, um, again, because of what's going on in our world, and um, again, the attention that it's drawing, mm -hmm. we wanted to <clears throat> circle back and make sure as a nucleus that we, we are strong mm -hmm. together. Um, again, so much going on. It's hard to even put, your, put a finger on it. Um, but again, it's it's one thing it's doing, I think it's bringing us in the home. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things um, are shutting down. Um, we have to be in the home together. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, that can be a good thing. Yeah. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of people like, oh, now we have to be in the same place together and we don't get along. And, you know, I like my space. I like my, you know, my private time and all of that. Now he's going to be in my space or she's going to be in my space. So you hear all those kinds of things. And that's something that we need to consider. Mm -hmm. But someone said to me the other day, why don't we look at it differently? Instead of saying, oh, he's going to be in my space or she's going to be in my space. Say we get the opportunity to spend time together. Mm -hmm. We get the opportunity to be in each other's space. Mm -hmm. We, you know, it's the same thing, but how we look at it, you know, our vantage point really changes when we just kind of take our selfish mm -hmm. um, piece of it out of, you know, out of that. Um, we are coming together for a reason, right. right? So let's, when we come together, let's enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Let's put some things in place where we can intentionally enjoy each other we talked about not just falling over our relationship but intentionally walking in a relationship and putting goals in place that we are again just going in one direction up in one direction mm -hmm. right following christ and together as a family yeah we do because we often forget that when we first met you first met your spouse you wanted to spend all you were on the phone with them until two o'clock in the morning you only got on the phone at nine and didn't get off until two o'clock in the morning. And we, mm -hmm. you spend time with that with your spouse when you were a new couple or uh, you were married. Uh, initially, you wanted to spend all the time in the world that you could together. And even when you were dating and when you were courting, you mm -hmm. wanted to do that. So this is a time where we want to celebrate that time and not be fearful like the world fears. Mm -hmm. As Christians, not to be fearful as the world fears, although we do have to be cautious. It's nothing wrong about being cautious. We have to be cautious. Wash mm -hmm. your hands. Yeah. Make sure that you won't... You, you, you know, you, you're just sanitizing yourself. Um, but we don't want to give in to fear because we know that the Lord says that he has not given us the spirit of fear. Power. 
and, and love, love and of a sound mind. Soundness so we want to, and, and, yeah. and that's so crucial, the soundness of mind, the power, the love, and then the sound mind. Um, and those things are very crucial to have as a couple and as individuals. Yes. And my wife going to share with you uh, um, the B portion of our life verse, which is another scripture she's going to share with you with that. And when you do that, honey, I just want to uh, go over a couple things as it relates to that as well. So we just want to encourage you to, uh, like like she said, um, use this as an opportunity, a joyful opportunity, yes. just to come together that you can celebrate each other, even during this difficult time. Amen. So our verse, um, our our life's first book mm -hmm. is um, Ephesians 1 17 and mm -hmm. the B portion says that we may get the spirit of wisdom and revelation mm -hmm. that we may know him better that you may know him better. that we may know him better and every time I hear that the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know him better mm -hmm. when we when he reveals himself more and more to us we become closer that's that intimacy absolutely you know and we get excited <clears throat> when he reveals himself to us through his word it's like this i just read this yesterday now where did this you know when he reveals himself when he speaks to us through his precious holy spirit those kind of things ignite mm -hmm. you know they are mm -hmm. igniting us because we're drawing closer we're drawing closer to the Father, mm. to the heart of God, you know, learning how to press in. Right. You know, so we want the spirit of what? Wisdom mm -hmm. and revelation that we may know him better. And it's interesting. I like that, honey, because you heard this in the other segment that mm -hmm. we had, but it bears repeating mm -hmm. that Jesus, the Apostle Paul did not say, uh, I pray the Lord will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may preach better, mm -hmm. have a better sermon, yeah. or that you may um, have more uh, power in the anointing. He, he didn't say any of yeah. those things that we church folks do, mm -hmm. but he said this very crucial that I, I pray that the Lord would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation for one purpose and to yeah. this end that you may know him better, Praise period, full stop, Amen. end of paragraph. Amen. And that's exactly that what so it's good. about because it's about that intimate relationship with him. And when you develop that intimacy with him, it will have a systemic effect on your intimacy mm -hmm. with your spouse. Other with each other mm -hmm. and then you will no longer dread that time alone with each other but you will you celebrate that time yeah. and you look forward to that time with each other so that's very crucial Amen. i love that it turns that dread into celebration mm -hmm. and yep. only god can do that that's true that's you know? true and again we want to know from you hear from you what you're doing mm -hmm. um again this is something that is kind of forced we have to be together right right we want to hear from you the things that you kind of develop together or things that maybe even found out about each other that you know it's kind of got washed over because of the cares of the world mm -hmm. because of our schedules and that kind of thing so this is a time to just reignite our love for each other. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, and one of our, our hosts, uh, Dr. Nate, she uh, reminded us about um, the emergency kits that we should have at home. Uh, yes. You know, the Red Cross yes. preparedness or emergency kits. So uh, making sure you have those things in your home, you know, your flashlight, your, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're supposed to have, right? We want to um, be practical in our thinking as it relates to that, mm -hmm. um, but not fearful, like you said, it's mm -hmm. so good. And just make sure you have those things that you need. And then do some things together um, during this time. Do some things together uh, that you may not have. One of the ladies said, you know, and again, the children are home. I know that can be something, <laughs> right? They're out of school. But one of the things, uh, our daughter, you know, she said um, the kids are learning an instrument. So they had to practice, you know, over the course of the week. And then on Friday, where they were supposed to come and do concert. You know, that kind of stuff is really mm -hmm. cool, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what can you do together as a family and incorporate your children, you know, and keeping them busy during this time? Um, again, it's going to take some, some creativity. But if you simply ask God, he's going to show you what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You he know, is. he really is. <clears throat> it's um, it's interesting that you you can also this time will also be used to develop uh, not only that intimate relationship mm -hmm. with each other, but most importantly that intimate relationship with the Lord. Because in our hurried day, sweetheart, mm -hmm. um, we're getting up five. Or some of some of you guys get up at four in the morning, five in the morning, mm -hmm. three in the morning, and you three rush out. <laughs> three in the morning, and and you rush out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you you rush out. 
um, and you go to work, you get to hurry of your day, mm. you're exhausted when you come home and yeah. you plop down on the couch yeah. uh, or you do what you got to do. And some of us have that luxury to plop down on the couch, mm-hmm. but but she doesn't. <laughs> she she comes home and I mean, I'm just overwhelmed and, and just blown away by, you know, the work that she does. It's just crazy. But even in that, you can't you you, you have to begin your day with Christ. Yes. Revisit him with Throughout, throughout your day, day yeah. and in your day with him. Yeah. And when you do that, and when you do that, you, you, he will share with you. He would show you in your heart mm-hmm. about how you need to love your spouse and be with one another and use those tools that you talked about, those emergency kits. Yeah. And really, they really shouldn't even be emergency kits, mm-hmm. but they just be, be, that just yeah. be in your daily, yeah, yeah. exactly, your daily, your daily need of, mm-hmm. of loving and caring and those type of things but it all starts begins ends saturated in the middle with your relationship with jesus and mm-hmm. you always wonder why I always we, we always reserve revert back to christ we because you you have to have that intimacy with him um with this the title of this segment quality, quality time. time excuse me quality time with mm-hmm. ken and brenda but actually it's intimacy with christ yeah. and quality time with each other yeah. and that's just it's just really so crucial that you have to maintain that personal and that intimate relationship with our lord and savior jesus christ mm-hmm. and I'm, i make no apology sweetie for continuing to revert back to that because i think that um the reason why we struggle with each other mm-hmm. we struggle to even be around each other yeah. is because we haven't solidified that relationship relationship. with Christ and it's interesting that some of us think that we solidify that relationship Mm -hmm. with Christ Mm -hmm. I mean we can say all the right words you know we have all the right church jargon to say you know and who's God is with me who can be against me Mm -hmm. I mean uh, we say all these scriptures and but it's really evident in your lifestyle It's evident in your walk. It's evident in your relationship with not only with, with, of course, Christ, but as a relationship with your spouse, with your children, with your co-workers. Um, So that's why that intimacy, that quality time with him, it is so crucial. It really is. It really is. Um, Honey, go go on to um, scripture and Psalms that you wanted to talk about, because I want to follow that up with something. Psalm 62.5. Mm. Um, We were... I don't know why what happened um, that this came to mind, mm-hmm. but it oh it's about expectation. We were talking about um, you know maybe before you were married. Um, this was this was a woman before we were married. You were you know just so in love and you wanted so much um, out of your marriage. Mm. You know so excited about marriage and then when you got married. This is again a conversation um, a month later. She was sad and downcast. And I'm like, what happened? You were so excited about, you know, this. But the expectation that she had was not realistic. Mm. Um, And it wasn't wasn't something that um, someone said to her, but it was something that I guess she had carried with her through her life. That when this actually or finally happened, this is the way it would be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And even though there was counseling and these things that we go through step by step, there was still that expectation that she held on to. And within a month of the relationship, the marital relationship, it wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. Now, usually within that month, that's when everything is just <laughs> wonderful. You know, we're learning each other and all that's going on. But in that time, there was an expectation that was not met. Mm. So now we're in a marriage and she's miserable. So that that scripture Mm -hmm. came to mind. You know, the end of it is that our expectation comes from God. Mm -hmm. And um, and thank you for that. I'm going to read it Mm -hmm. from the King James. And it says, um, my soul wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. My soul waits only upon God. Mm hmm. And the thing I long for, the outcome, is from him. Mm-hmm. And that came, it was. It just brought to light what the scripture meant when she talked about that expectation, mm-hmm. that feeling, mm-hmm. that thing that she'd held on for since she was a little girl. Mm-hmm. And because it was not met, now it makes everything just kind of fell apart for her. Mm-hmm. So that's foundational 
right? What is our expectation? That's foundational mm -hmm. because that foundation wasn't met. It kind of crumbled in a month. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I was, you know, that was, again, I guess a life lesson for me. Um, our expectation has to be from God. The thing we hope and want for has to come from God. The, the, the outcome, the outcome mm -hmm. has to come from God. It does. And you talk about, the, I like the King James when it talks about the expectation mm -hmm. uh, is from God. He yeah. says, uh, my soul Wait. uh, waits on the Lord mm -hmm. and my expectation is from him. Yeah. Uh, and we often um, put that into another jar. We actually put that scripture into a jar mm -hmm. of my expectation is for what she can do for me. Right what I'm expecting and when I don't get what I'm expecting from her then my continence has fallen more or I, I don't behave the way that I should should behave the mm -hmm. way that I love yeah. because we have a, our expectations are wrong our soul our longing mm -hmm. is wrong mm -hmm. and we, we need to love each other we need to honor each other and and there, there, there are certain earthly expectations that mm -hmm. I may have, but that pales by comparison yeah. to my expectation from Christ because she does not dictate my mood. Right. She should it's not so dictate important. the way that I love and the way that I, uh, uh, the way that I behave. Um, you know, it's very interesting because if the way she behaves dictate the way that I behave, then I'm the one that's in sin. Yeah. I'm the one that's not really following Christ because why is my why is my happiness contingent okay. on her love or yeah. the way that she treats me? Yeah. It shouldn't be contingent on that. It can be my love, no matter what, irrespective of whether she shows me love by by meeting those um, those those love languages, mm -hmm. irrespective of that, mm -hmm. that has no bearing on the way that I should continue to develop that relationship mm -hmm. with Christ and and love her and honor her and respect her, mm -hmm. irrespective of the way she's treating me. Mm -hmm. See, we think that it's reciprocal. Yeah. It, it's really it's really not reciprocal um, because God is our great. You know, it's interesting in John chapter four when we know about when Jesus met the uh, Samaritan woman at the well mm -hmm. and he was talking to the Samaritan woman and many of you know the story but when you jump down to uh, 32 uh, verse 32 when well a little bit before that when 27 when the disciples returned and saw Jesus speaking to the woman uh, but they went on to say you know about bringing food and I mean, just read it for you it, mm -hmm. it says in John 4 uh, verse 7 27 and I want to read down to 36 it says, uh, just then his disciples returned um, and were supposed to find him talk and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asks, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Mm -hmm. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Meanwhile, and here's what I want to get to in verse uh, 31. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. And this is in the NIV. Okay. And he says in verse 32, but he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? And this is what Jesus says, sweetie. In verse 34, he says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me mm -hmm. and to finish his work. You know, Jesus, he corrected what their thought was because they were trying to meet his physical needs. They were worried about Jesus' physical needs. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had to stop them and say, listen, I have food that you have no I idea. You. you don't know what my, my food is to do the will of my father, even above my physical needs. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what we mm -hmm. read in Psalm 62, uh, 62 five. chapter 5, mm -hmm. that his soul longs for him. Mm -hmm. He says here, my soul waits thou only upon God for my expectation is from him my expect ex expectation is not from her yeah. my food is to do the will of god who sent me on this earth to be a blessing and an anointing to people who are lost people and to show love when jesus says the greatest commandment is this that you love the lord thy god with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind mm -hmm. and the second is like unto the other that you love your neighbor as yourself right. if you just do these two things all the other prop the laws follow these 300 and uh, those um what is it? Oh, i forgot how you know but 600 and 14 laws or something like that. Mm -hmm. They followed that. Um, 
they followed uh, 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 those ju just those two commandments. They all hung on just those two commandments. And Jesus gives us an example mm -hmm. because, again, my happiness is not contingent upon what, the way she treats me. Yeah. It, it's not. Yeah. Um, you see, God did not give us um, jealousy. He did not give us the emotion of jealousy. He did not give us the emotion of anger. He did not give us those emotions. Those emotions Adam gave us when the mm -hmm. fall came. If you remember, um, you remember quite frank, frequently when, when the Lord says, out of all the trees, don't you, you can eat all the trees in the garden except for the, the, this tree here, the knowledge mm -hmm. of good and evil. Right. See, when he did that, then their eyes were open. And then, you know, Adam and Eve, they had to sow fig leaves right. around themselves because they realized that they were naked. And God called them on the sh when he was walking through the garden and, and called out to them. And then Adam, Adam, he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I hid myself mm -hmm. because I was naked. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord that? says, well, who told you you were naked? <laughs> Nobody told who told you you were naked. Mm -hmm. And then it goes, the story goes on from there. But the issue is, is that if your expectation and your happiness is contingent upon your spouse, then you need to change your perspective back to Christ. Yeah. And remember what John chapter four says, my food is to do you have, I have, Jesus says, I have food that you do not know anything about. Yeah. And my food is to do the will of the father who sent me. Amen period that's exactly what he said and that's where he gets his strength he gets his strength from obeying god and loving him irrespective of what she does or treats me irrespective amen and that's you know that comes with um maturity mm -hmm. you know because i was having a similar conversation with someone and they couldn't get the concept mm -hmm. couldn't grasp grasp the concept of um, the word being the, the number one authority mm -hmm. in your home and even like you said respect of uh, the love languages we know that we are supposed to know each other's love language speak to that love language so they can hear you know we have to speak the, la the language that they're hearing thus touching their heart with that but sometimes it, it takes a growth period mm -hmm. you know but the foundational piece of the marriage has to be the word of God Absolutely. and the person I was speaking to couldn't they didn't quite grasp this to the point that it was almost annoying. Wow. You know, it was almost annoying to the, they said, well, let's go on to something else. <laughs> because it was, mm. it wasn't, um, it wasn't something that they could get at that moment. But we know that the word of God turns up the soil, right? And that it's planted. It was planted. Mm -hmm. So that was a seed that was planted prayerfully it fell on good ground mm -hmm. um but again you somebody plants borders but only god makes things grow mm -hmm. but even in, if people are annoyed mm -hmm. by the word of god you mm -hmm. still have to present it oh absolutely you know and mm -hmm. and, and love absolutely um, yep because again someone can come by absolutely and then put water on it mm-hmm but it's mm -hmm. we have to plant the seed and it was just so interesting i was like wow haven't heard that kind of um yeah. I mean, they were very annoyed. <laughs> I hadn't heard that in a long time. Yeah. But when people want what they want, they will be annoyed yeah. by by the word of God because it cuts right through it that. Cuts, right. It cuts through that. It says what? To the bone and marrow and sub divides. Mm -hmm. Right. So the seed was planted and mm -hmm. I, we're trusting that someone will water it and then God yeah. will make it grow. And, and you water it with gentleness and with respect. And respect. Not with arrogance. Not with with a self, um, um, uh, what do you call it? A self-righteous disposition mm -hmm. or attitude. Yeah. In the way, that, even the way that we, even though you may tell somebody something correct in yeah. the word, and it's right there in the word, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's the way that you do it, and that's why the Bible commands us. He tells us to do it with gentleness mm -hmm. and respect. with respect, yeah. not with a nose up in the air and with arrogance. Because again, people are we we have to grow to maturity. And it's interesting in Hebrews chapter five, going into verse six, Hebrews chapter five. Um, the, uh, Paul says this, and I believe that the writer of Hebrews is Paul, by the way. There's many who mm -hmm. argue the other, mm -hmm. but I do believe it is Paul. But anyway, in Hebrew or Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, uh, he's talking about Jesus being after the similitude of Melchizedek or Melchizedek, Melchizedek mm -hmm. the priest Melchizedek, mm -hmm. and how he is after the likeness of Melchizedek with his priesthood. Mm -hmm. But then here's the interesting thing about that. The writer stops 
in mid-sentence or mid-paragraph, and he mm -hmm. says this in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. He says that we have much more to say about this, but it's hard to explain because you are slow to learn. Mm. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of the word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, mm -hmm. is not acquainted with the teaching, listen, with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, mm -hmm. who by constant use, listen, by constant Love use, that. have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And this is by chapter six. Constant use. Constant use. Yes. And then chapter six, verse one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us leave the elementary tr teachings about Christ. Mm -hmm and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts of lead to death and of faith in God and instruction about baptism and laying on of hands uh -huh. and a resurrection of the dead yeah. and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. But then he goes on to say that we need to teach people about growing to maturity and maturity is about living in righteousness. And he says this in verse five, chapter five, verse 11, he says, I have much more to say about yeah, these things. But, you're not ready. but he had to stop and say, but you're not ready because you're still an infant. Mm -hmm. So we have to train people and teach people with gentleness and with respect to stop feeding on milk. Yes. How you how are you going to be an infant? Can you imagine? We have we have two grand what well, we have four five, five grandchildren actually. Mm -hmm. Five grandchildren. And I can imagine when I know when they were born um and when they were children, they were 1 years old. Can you imagine 10 years later that child is still 1 years old? Mm. Or the mindset still is still one model. one year yeah. one one yeah. year old, and even still, not only mentally but also physically, as a little baby. Mm -hmm. And you would think there's something unnatural about yeah. this, yeah. something That's not natural. That natural, mm -hmm. when you grow, that child each year, that child should grow and grow into maturity. But what we're and, and what we're doing is that we're continuously feeding that child milk, mm -hmm. milk, milk, instead of giving that child what it needs yeah. to nourish correctly. Yeah. And that's what we do. So we, we we have to people have to make a decision. It's a choice to follow Christ. Unfortunately, a lot of people choose unrighteousness rather yeah. than righteousness because it's easier. It's it's right. So because it goes, it doesn't go against our flesh when we don't choose righteousness. Mm -hmm. And um you know, and the, I, this is quality mm -hmm. time with Ken mm -hmm. and Brenda, and it's good sometimes to even have a study in this way. Right. But um, the only way we can really get closer to each other truly is what? By relationship with God. Absolutely. You know, we are feeding, feeding the flesh. you got to feed it, <laughs> you know. And again, some things are harder to chew than others. Mm -hmm. But you take a little bit at, at a time. Right. You know, you, you start getting your, your adult teeth and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's the the process. I, I love the illustration of the baby still mm -hmm. being the same at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so something, something would, if that were to happen, we'd take that baby mm -hmm. to a doctor, <laughs> you know, and then there would be a battery of tests. There right. would be some things going Absolutely. on because this isn't. This isn't normal. Right. And what we do as Christians, yeah. we accept that we behavior. We accept it. We, we accept, accept it. it and pacify it. Right. 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 So, again, this is how, as couples, this is how we be, we be, uh, come strong. Mm -hmm. And that's by what? Following mm -hmm. the precepts of the word. Yeah. Making the word our foundation, yeah. even though it may go against the grain. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things in the Bible. I was like, oof, am I ready for that? Mm-hmm. Ready or not, <laughs> you know, we but we we have the decision. We can say not today. Yeah. Or we can say, OK, God, you know, and it was interesting. It was one time I was so I think I was just very tired mm -hmm. and um, and you were very tired and you had come home and I had just maybe gotten home, too. And I had to take a breath and OK, so dinner needs to be done. Right. Mm. And I started dinner. And I was just very tired. I just had a moment trying to get myself together. But the scripture came, whatever you eat, whatever you do, whatever it is, mm. do to the glory of God. And that immediately changed my attitude. Mm. Although I'm tired, just like he's tired, you know, but there is something, you know, I had to do that. Right. Because it was something I said I was going to do mm -hmm. or that, you know, because he was handling other things I had to, you know, again, we have responsibilities. So that that time that was mine to do. Mm -hmm. And if I had said, sweetie, I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. You know what he would have said? OK, baby, we'll do something else. Mm -hmm. You know, 
but I, you know, we you can't. It's something about fast food mm -hmm. and grab as you go kind of things. You know, it's okay for that time. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be a time where you are sitting and you are eating, right. you know, nutritious food and, you know, things that are prepared by hand. I mean, there are some things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. Fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, that was one of those days where it could not be a, a takeout. We needed to sit down and eat something that was substantive. Right. Right. And be, and I began to do that. But I was very tired. But again, as soon as that scripture came. Right away, mm -hmm. I was tired. Mm -hmm. But it changed my thought. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. it was something that I, I should do because it needs to be done. But it just changed the way I thought about it. You know, like I said, if I just said, no, listen, I can't. He would have said, oh, no problem. But there was something that needed to be done and that I had to I had to do it because I was in charge of menu and preparation and all that he didn't know anything about what i had in mind <laughs> right so to give him something that he knows nothing about would have taken more time mm -hmm. you know although you wouldn't have minded mm -hmm. but it would take him more time so if i am the one if you are the one that's to is to do something and it's in your hand to do it do it mm -hmm. to the glory of god mm -hmm. without murmuring without yeah. complaining Nasty. you know and if you if you need help from god what do we do we ask. Mm -hmm. You know, it was many times I'm fretting about things and God's like, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. Our Father is always here. Ask Him. Okay, God, I need I need strength for today. I need right. strength for this moment because I don't I'm not feeling it. He gives us the strength. How about that? Mm -hmm. You know, he, when we ask our Father, He won't give us a stone. He won't give us a serpent. Mm -hmm. Right? He gives us good gifts right and for me when I felt that that was a life lesson it's something that always comes back to me because I knew how I felt in the moment I was tired you know I, I just couldn't it was just too much mm. but as soon as that scripture came and the the power of the word came and filled me mm -hmm. I was bouncing around like you would have never known that I was tired yeah. because the, the word energizes us. Mm -hmm. When we allow the spirit of the Lord to do what he does, mm -hmm. you know, what he brings us back to God, right? The, the all glory and all honor go to him. And when we're in that space of glory, where we're giving him praise, we have an unnatural, right. unnatural strength, right? Supernatural, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. So he... That's the thing, wisdom and revelation to know him better. Yes. That's what that is. Right. Wisdom and revelation. He opened up my opened me up. Yes. So I could see, yeah, you're tired, but let me do this in you. Right. Right. And now something simple as dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, but he takes that into everything if we simply ask and and are there present to learn the lesson. Because some lessons takes longer longer than five minutes. Right. Right. That's <laughs> right? true. And just to recap what you said and we're gonna go back to how we open up the broadcast mm -hmm. about spending spending this time this time with the Lord yeah. and which has a systemic effect on spending time with, with each, each other you. even during this COVID-19 crisis mm. that we face that we want to re remind you um, is just to continue to seek the Lord um, and it's not work it's a relationship it it's a relationship with him he is a loving father he is a loving God who loves you and he just want to cultivate that relationship with yeah. you and him and, and while you're doing that, it's just do what he tells you to do. He tells you to, he tells you to love your wife. He tells you to love your husband, irrespective of whether they show recompense to you. Yeah. Irrespective of that. Yeah. You love them. You care for them. You honor them, even when you're tired. See, here's the thing. That story you just said, I didn't know anything about. I'm just learning that right now. <laughs> I had no idea. And if I did find out about it, well, I would have assailed her concerns and mm -hmm. I would have did exactly what she said. And mm -hmm. I would have said, baby, we don't have to do that. As a matter of fact, let's go out to dinner or mm -hmm. let's order something. And now I know why she didn't want to order because mm -hmm. of the fast food thing. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that my job, our job, and I would have very well just cooked it. Last time I did cook, I burnt the kitchen down, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. True story, actually. <laughs> But that's neither here nor there. But um, I would have I would have done it. I mean, I would have made sure because, again, you're my wife and mm -hmm. I don't ever want to see you in the position where you're struggling 
to do something. And that shouldn't be that way because we're supposed to hear, supposed to, supposed to help each other out of love because my responsibility is to love you the way Christ told me to love you and the way Christ loves the church. Yeah. And that's what we're supposed to do to each other. Listen, men, we are not their bosses. Yeah. We are not their bosses. We have a we are equal in God's eyes. We have certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. I have a responsibility mm -hmm. over her, mm -hmm. um, and she has a responsibility to me. So God gives us certain responsibilities, but at no time will we ever, will I ever think that I'm in her boss, mm -hmm. or or vice versa. But we look at each other as equal in God's eyes, and at the end of the day, God is going to come to me and ask me about the health of my home. He's going to come to me. He's not going to come there. He's going to come to me yeah. as the husband, position. as the overseer, yeah, as the yeah. position mm -hmm. to make sure that this health this health that this house is stable and that we are following um the love of god and the example that he put in, in, in when he says christ what did jesus say again we remember he says my will is to do my food is to do the will of him who sent me and again ephesians 1 17 um i pray that the lord would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better yeah. no no not so mm. you can preach better no, yeah. <laughs> Not so you can uh, bring down the house with your singing better. Mm -hmm. No, but that you may know him better. Period. Full stop. End of paragraph. I love that. And again, we're going to have some some time, right, together as couples and, and um, children to spend yeah. in that. And let's make this time count. Amen. You know, and we're, we're praying, we're covering all of us. And I know we're all praying that... Um, supplies and sustenance and things that we need um god already promised that he would provide that yes, right? he did. Yep. and that um in this time that fear is not fueling mm. how we're moving forward you know if you can do something for someone else do it right if you can help provide for someone else help provide you know look in and look on you know call each other make sure everybody's okay mm -hmm. so you know this is something that we should be doing um, certainly during this time and for times to, to follow. Um, but I think we're excited about the, the time, mm -hmm. the quality time now mm -hmm. that um, we can spend with each other and mm -hmm. with our children. And <clears throat> just let us know what are the creative things that you've come up with, you know, so you're not getting cabin fever. What are the things, you, you know, there's so much. I know as a, as, as a child, I remember just being in the room and how we used to just sing and bang and all that <laughs> stuff, you know. We want to know what you're doing and, you know, what has come. What good, mm -hmm. what good has come out of this? And even sometimes it brings up the bad part first, and then you work through it mm -hmm. until that good appears. So mm -hmm. just let us know um, how you're faring. You know, we are praying for you. Again, we have a prayer. Uh, if you go to um, heartministrynetwork.com, there is one of the tabs there that reads prayer. So if you have a prayer request, that you need us to um, take to the Lord in your behalf, then we are here mm -hmm. for that. We will do that. We will cover you um, with with prayer and prayer um, during this time. So heartministrynetwork.com, there is a tab that says prayer request. Mm -hmm. Just go and put your prayer request. You know, you don't even have to put your name. You know, it could be anonymous. Right. But we just want to know what you need prayer for. Right. And we will earnestly, earnestly do that. Amen. And we're going to actually pray now. We're yeah. going to pray. I'll lead us in prayer. And then, sweetie, you will close us out with mm -hmm. our network mm -hmm. information and contact numbers and email, et cetera. Yeah. And, uh, but just want to pray for you who are there today as you as couples and you and you uh, who are not even Christians but yeah. um, who's watching this broadcast and want to know how do I know the Lord better yeah. just want to lead you in prayer and just um, just remind you who you are in Christ Jesus because you are you have no idea uh, how the oh, Lord Jesus. sees you and how much he loves you really he really do see you way different than when you see yourself he really does yes. um, yeah. you know and we just have to come to that realization that we are valuable so much so when Jesus said in John 3 16 that for God when the Lord says in 3 16 where God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten yeah. son uh, he didn't say that God so hated the world or despised the world mm -hmm. he said for God yeah. so loved the world yeah. And then he goes on to say in verse 17 that he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. So just want to encourage you in that and just uh, just want to lead you in prayer. We're going to just pray. And then, honey, you're going to close us out with the network information mm -hmm. and um, want to join. Welcome. Thank you again for joining us. This is another segment of. Quality time. Quality time with Ken and Brenda. <laughs> so let us pray. Yeah. Dear Father, I thank you for those who 
are watching this broadcast. I thank you, Lord, that you have opened up their heart, Lord. They could have watched anything else, but yes, you chose God. for them to turn on that computer, to turn on that television, to come to this station and I pray that you will allow that time this moment in their lives to be a very special and tender moment where you will meet them in, in that quiet time of their heart and of their minds in Jesus name and father there may be someone watching this program today that don't know you and if it's you I pray that the Lord will just open up your eyes of understanding open up your heart not to just hear the word of God but I pray that the Lord would just come in and make his place make his place in your heart. So if that's you, will you please follow me in prayer as I pray and just follow me. Pray, Father God, in Jesus name, I pray that you please forgive me of my sins. I believe, Jesus, that you died for me and that you rose again on the third day. I give my heart to you. I confess all of my sins and ask that you will forgive me and that you will come into my heart and make your home with me. Father, lead me into the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, I'm new at this. Please lead me to a church where I can grow and flourish in you. Bring people into my life that will teach me the ways of the Lord and let me know through your word how I can know you better. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please reach out to us. Email us. My wife's going to give you the information. Email us. Call us. And let us know that you did say that prayer. And we want to walk with you. And we want to plug you into a local church where you can grow and be encouraged in the Lord. Amen? Amen. And for those of you who are there, we just want to continue to encourage you in, in the Lord to to just continue to seek God's face. Mm -hmm. And while doing so, you would have, there was a systemic, systemic effect in seeking each other and living a life that God please, uh, desires for you as a couple. So we thank you for joining us again in Heart Ministry, Radio, Heart Ministry Network. Amen. God bless you. And thank you, sweetheart. Um, there are several ways you can reach out to us. Our site is heartministrynetwork.com. And when you go to the site, there's two things you can do. Um, there is a white box that appears, um, and you can put your email, your email, and your nickname in. And what that does is allows us to, you know, follow up with you, give you any updates, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. If you choose not to, all you do is hit the X, and then we have 24 hours of Christian inspirational television. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can all day. You know, you always we're always looking for good shows to watch. Heart Ministry Network is a wonderful place. And then again, if you have a prayer request, just go to the prayer request tab and put that information. Mm -hmm. If you want to email us, you can do info at heartministrynetwork.com. Or if you want to personally send us, Brenda at heartministryradio.com. Again, and even if you are an indie artist, um, have a music video, we would love to talk to you. And if you're looking to have your own television show, give us a call, 215-847-6664. Again, we're excited about what God is doing. We are excited uh, about the interaction, mm -hmm. you know, and we always get excited when we hear what you're doing, um, the good things you're doing, and things that you are struggling with, because we're all struggling with something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But um, follow up again, Heart Ministry Network dot com even heartministryradio.com there's so many ways to reach us but reach out heartministrynetwork.com heartministryradio.com and again brenda at heartministryradio.com will be the personal email amen well again god bless you and god keep you is our prayer we love you but yes, christ loves so you true. more and we just want to encourage you until the next time we meet again god bless you and god keep you is our prayer bye-bye god bless you